When we look at handwriting identification, there are two basic tenets. No one ever writes the same way twice. No two people write exactly alike. Now, can we prove that? No. Those are they're not testable hypotheses, but they're reasonable hypotheses. And what we have to ask the question is, is it, what is the chance that any two people who potentially could have written the document write, ident write alike? Now, later on, we'll see a case that I had here in San Diego who went to probate court a couple of years ago where, well, my opinion was inconclusive because the checks that were written to the woman who's the question, did she really write, sign the check, the person who wrote her name on, to, on checks, she wrote her name, they wrote their, her name almost identically. So it was so close, it was inconclusive. But these are the basic tenets of handwriting identification. That no one ever writes their name exactly the way, same way twice. And no two people in the set of people who could potentially be the authors write, write identically. When we look at handwriting identification, there are different attributes we look at. This is a situation where I know the answer to the question of which ones were written by someone else, which ones were written by the, by the same person, because this is from a proficiency test. So we know the answer. The one on top is known to have been written by this person. The next one down is, a gen, it says a, it's genuine questioned. What that means is it was submitted as a questioned document. The question is, did the person write it? And we know that really is the person's signature. The next one down, it says, disguise questioned. And what disguised means is that someone changes their handwriting for the purpose of not of being able to say later on, I didn't write that. So this is a situation where this person tried to change his writing from that to this. And the one on the bottom is what's called simulated. It's called simulated because someone else tried to copy that person's signature, but it was, wasn't the right, it wasn't the same person. Now, we don't use the word forged. Any suggestions why we don't use the word forged? And by the way, one of the rules of the presentation is if you have questions, ask them when you have them, because you'll forget and it'll be out of context. But why wouldn't I, as a document examiner, say it's a forged signature? Why would I say it's simulated? Sounds to me like it, like it's a loaded word, like you're reaching an opinion off that off that word forged. Yes, and what's that opinion? That it's not the the, the original that the original author didn't write the document. Right, but that, I would say that and say it's simulated. And the reason I wouldn't say forged forged implies what? Penal code. It, well, not just penal code. It implies intent. Now, if I call my wife and say, you know, I can't get there. Can you sign that? contract for me or sign that document for me or put my name on the check. There's no forgery. She's simulating my name, but there's no intent to deceive. And that's what it comes down to is that's for the trier of fact to determine. Is it a forgery? I can say it's a simulated si signature that the person whose name is there did not write it, but that's for someone else to determine what to do with that. So when we look at handwriting, there's what's called inter-writer variability. Inter-writer variability is how does the writing differ uh, between or among people? This is from an experiment that I conducted a couple of years ago, actually a few years ago, where I asked the people to write the exact, different people to write the exact same sentence. So this is the, the letter Y in the same word written by different people. And we can see that it looks different. There's no real confusion, even though the one on the upper left and the, on the bottom left are written with one, one stroke and the, and the last stroke doesn't have the typical loop coming up, we can see there are differences. We can see on the, on the far right that the stroke is, the, the Y is made with two separate strokes. So that's probably a different person. And I know it's a different person because, well, it was part of an experiment and I know who did them. And the one on bottom comes and makes that loop up. Now, there's also what's called intra 
writer variability, which is how does the person change their writing each time they write? And this is from the same experiment. In this experiment, I had the, peers, the people write the same sentence four different times with time lapse between because I wanted to see in this experiment are what I'm calling micro anomalies a result of the pen or the writer or an interaction. So that's what the purpose of the experiment was. But this, these were all written by the same person. And when we look in the upper left, we can see that the, the loop is a little different from the loops in, the, in all the others. The way it crosses is different, and the way it crosses in all of them is different. If we look in the bottom right, we can see that the finish is with a little twist at the end. But I know it's all the same person. And when we do handwriting identification, that's why we need a lot of exemplars. Because we have to find out what are the what's the variability of the way the person writes. Now, raise your hand if you've had a situation where you've had to authenticate handwriting as part of a case. What about authentication of a document? One person, what, what was that? Going to have that issue, that's why I'm here. I'm sorry? I said going to have that issue, that's why I'm here. Okay. So that's the situation where when we have handwriting that needs to be identified, we have to have a lot of exemplars. Now, I ask for at least 15. At a case that went to trial in downtown back in January, I had more than 1,000 exemplars from the writer. And that was an interesting one because the document examiner on the other side, in, when we saw his notes and we exchanged evidence, he had something in his notes that said he couldn't solve the problem in the way that the attorneys who hired him were hoping he would solve it. But then he came across one exemplar. And he had more than 1,000 also because we exchanged our evidence, but he came across one that solved the case. The problem was he literally skewed the evidence. He turned it so that a stroke that went to the right looked like it went to the left. And this person always made that stroke going to the right. Well, what I did is I just turned it so it was horizontal and showed that there was a 40 degree difference between what he was saying and what it was. And when he was asked in, in, in trial, well, how did you measure that? He said, well, I didn't. There's no valid way to measure it, which is absurd. I mean, he could have pulled, done the old-fashioned way, just pull out a protractor, you know? <laughs> so anyway, we, the, the, here we have what's called intra-writer variability, or how does the person's writing vary? And we'll see many examples as we go forward.